of centuries and millennia past. Animals have been involved in warfare, be it the elephant crossing the Alps during the Second Punic War, the horse, for me were knight to ride on, or be it the pigeon whom would carry messages in the Great War, but could be apprehended by a falcon. As well, man's best friend was not to be immune from the pitiful thing which is war. In this video, we shall look at dogs whom served during the Second World War. On the early morn of the 10th of July, 1943, Private John R. Wowell hits a beach in Sicily as part of Operation Husky, accompanying him as Chips, his sentry dog. Soon after landing, Private Wowell advanced inland along with his platoon, the 3rd Military Police. But then a machine gun spits out its wrathful fire, and Private Wowell and the other men hit the ground. But Chips, he runs away toward the machine gun. Fire of a pistol is heard. Then, an Italian soldier emerges from the hut. Private John R. Wowell instructs Chips off and three other men emerge with the hands above the heads. Chips was born in Pleasantville, New York, as a German Shepherd mix. His owners were Mr. and Mrs. Wenz originally, and they would volunteer him into the United States Army in the August of 1942, about eight months after the U.S. entry into the war. Chips would train in Front Royal, Virginia, where the War Dog Training Center was located. Then, following his training, he was given a private R. Wowell, and they would be taken to North Africa for the Operation Torch. In North Africa, Chips would in fact be a guard dog during the Casablanca Conference, but his exploits of course wouldn't end there, so Chips would actually suffer from burns. This was due to a pest of firing too close to him, and the very same day of him being wounded, the sentry dog would alert Private Wowell of 10 Italians attempting to infiltrate. They were all apprehended. For the sentry dog's valiant acts, he'd be awarded the Purple Heart, the Silver Star, and most pompously, the Distinguished Service Cross. For Courageous action and single-handedly eliminating a dangerous machine gun nest and causing the surrender of its crew. On November the 19th, 1943, whom I think is Lucian Trescott, personally awarded chips with the medal. Regulations, however, prohibited the awarding of decorations to beasts, and this would mean his medals would be taken away. But heroism isn't based on if you get a medal. It isn't based on what you think you did. It's based on what you did. Chips would have the honor of binding the future U.S. President and the Allied States were Allied Supreme Commander, Dwight D. Eisenhower. He would return home to his family in December 1945. In Papua New Guinea, there was found a small Yorkshire Terrier inside an abandoned foxhole. The miniature dog of four pounds was sold to Cobra Bahrain, and I believe was the March of 1944 for the sum of two Australian pounds. Japanese pilots were hitting the airfield in Lee Gulf over and over. Unfortunately for the American commanders, headings have taken their toll on the communication. Thusly, they desperately needed to get telephone lines underground through a pipe that only had a diameter of 8 inches. So a miniature dog, a Yorkshire Terrier, had string and tied to its collar, and she was sent into the pipe. She reached the other side, and a communication network was made. And by her action, Smarky is a credit to saving the life of hundreds of men over three dozen planes. Before this valiant action in January 1945, Corporal Bill Wayne, her owner, had come down with Nengu fever. His friends, in a kind act, brought Smokey to come and visit him, but she did get the attention of the nurses, whom would then take Smokey in the morning, bring her along through the shifts, and eventually would return her at the end of the day. The effect of this tiny, a très mignon, Yorkshire, was noticeable, and she would lift up soldiers' spirits by using tricks she'd been taught, and she would chase the Queen Alexandria's birdwing butterfly, which were in fact bigger than herself. Go from National Geographic. The duo's repertoire started modestly enough with basic commands, and Wayne soon had his diminutive charge plane dead. When Wayne would point one finger and yell, BANG! Not only would Smarky fall over the ground at the command, but she would lay there listless while Wayne come over to Pilker and prod her, and even as she was lifted from the ground, eventually he trained her to walk a type rope, ride a handmade scooter, and even spell her own name. Smarky would pick up the large cut-out letters in her mouth as he called them out to her. They all smiled. They all loved her. The AOP dog trend was not to be discontinued, however, but Smokey would stop being a therapy dog. She retired in 1955, but two years later, she would die in her sleep in 1957. She was just an instrument of love, said her owner, Copa Bewain, who would sadly die this year in April. He was less than a year short of a hundred. A German flask lies in the sky, while a parachuter named Bing is still in the plane. He would successfully parachute to the ground, and he would see the liberation of Normandy. 
Months later, he once again parachuted, but rather into the heartland of Germany, and then reached the Baltic. He wasn't a man named Bing, but rather a dog, an Alsatian collie mix. In the lead up to Operation Neptune, the 13th Lancashire Parachute Battalion trained dogs to keep watch for enemies and locate mines. So, of course, the way to train dogs in basically any dog is to include their login and the great desire for food. After my shoot developed, I turned to face the line of flight. The dog was 30 yards away from me and slightly above. The chute had opened and was oscillating slightly. Renee looked somewhat bewildered but showed no sign of fear. I called out and she immediately turned in my direction and wagged her tail ferociously. The dog touched down 80 feet before I had landed. She was completely relaxed, making no attempt to anticipate or resist the landing. Rolled over once, scrambled to her feet and stood looking around. I had landed 40 feet from her and immediately ran to her, released her and gave her the feed. However, training would not be evermore. Eventually, the day of woe and destruction have done. The 13th Lancashire Parachute Battalion departed with three planes of 20 men and one dog each at 11.30 p.m. The wrath of flak surrounded the plane and lit up the sky. Then, men and dog departed from the plane. Bing, a dog I had mentioned earlier, had been thrown out by the jumpmaster, but unfortunately would become stuck in a tree. Sometime later, he was found by a comrade and freed, with two scratches on his face, more than likely from German mortars. In addition, another dog, Monty, was severely wounded, and Renee, another dog, became lost from her battalion, not long for landing and was never found. The paradox would, however, not be a fruitless endeavor. The dogs also helped on patrols by sniffing out enemy positions and personnel, which saved many allied lives. Bing would survive the war and was rewarded the highest honor for animals. Conspicuous gallantry or devotion to duty while serving in any branch of the armed forces or civil defense units, the Dickens Medal. He died in 1955. Today, he has a replica of himself in the Parachute Regiment and Airborne Forces Museum. American Bomber Patrol. Hope you enjoy this video. Of course, there are way more stories of dogs and what they did in the Second World War. For example, the Soviets would use dogs as tank bombs to counter the mighty German Panzer, but it would backfire. And dogs would also be utilized by the Germans to guard the concentration camps. Thank you for watching my video. May God bless you, and may you have a great day or night.